Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to discuss various analysis concepts. So, uh, analysis object models and dynamic models, entity boundary and control objects, and generalization and specialization. So, uh, what is uh, model? Model is an abstraction of reality. So, uh, abstraction from things that really exist and the relationship so to abstract away from details in the reality so we can draw complicated conclusions in the reality with simple steps using model so to get inside into past or pres uh, or presence and to make predictions about the future so these are the uses of the model that's why we make models so analysis what is analysis analysis focuses on producing model of the system which we call analysis model so analysis is different from requirement elicitation uh, because in requirement elicitation developers focus focuses on structuring and formalizing the requirements elicited from users so the analysis model may not be understandable to user and client developers need to update the requirement specification to reflect insights gained during analysis phase so then review changes with client and users so the analysis model is uh, is composed of three individual models the functional model represent that is represented by use cases and scenarios the analysis object model represented by class and object diagram and dynamic model which is represented by a state chart and sequence diagram so, analysis object models and dynamic models what is the difference between two the analysis object model represents depicted with uml class diagram includes classes attributes and operations and the dynamic model focuses on behavior of the system so it includes state diagram and sequence diagram what is the difference between state diagram and sequence diagram sequence diagram represents the interaction among set of objects during a single use case while a state diagram represents the behavior of a single object or a group of tightly coupled objects so analysis examples and counter examples of classes in the analysis object model of sat watch which is the case study in your book so analysis object model or the dynamic model both represent user level concepts but the software classes will include much more attributes and association but most classes in the analysis model will correspond to will translate to one or more software classes but in general uh, the analysis model represents user level concept while the software classes represents the implementation level concepts so like time zone database refers to how time zones are stored 
user is not concerned with this detail. GPS locator denotes how location is measured. User ID refers to an internal mechanism for identifying some particular user. Next is the entity objects, boundary objects and control objects. These are the type of objects. So entity uh, objects, entities are objects that representing systems data like you make entities in ER diagram. So th this can be customer, product, transaction, card, any application domain object or any business object. So entity objects represent persistent information tracked by the system. So next is the boundary object as the name indicates boundaries are objects that interface with system actors Fine, they are basically interface to the system. For example, user interface, database gateway, server proxy, etc. And control objects are objects that mediate between boundaries and entities. So between boundaries and entities, there are control objects. There are usually control objects. So uh, the three object type approach leads to models that are more resistant to change. The interface to the system represented by boundary object is more likely to change as compared to entity and control objects. So we are able to keep most of model untouched when for example the user interface changes. So this is an this is a diagram which shows the analysis model for simple web browser in which entity boundary uh, control and en entity objects are given so gui and http gateway represents the boundary objects so this download controller represents the this is the notation for control object and this is the notation for used for entity object So having three types of objects leads to models that are more resistant to change. So interface of a system changes more likely than control. Fine. So if any change happens in the interface, the control uh, and uh, uh, entity remains unaffected. So naming of object types in UML. So UML provides a mechanism to, uh, to denote uh, entity control and uh, boundary objects. So you, uh, UML basically provides stereotype. So entity objects uh, you can represent in a rectangular box with entity stereotype and control object you can uh, attach control stereotype with this to indicate that this is a control object and boundary object rep is represented by boundary stereotype so this represents interface this usually is the mediator between entity and boundary uh, object and this represents an, uh, any persistent information So the, the, these are the analysis classes for B, uh, to be watch example. So another way to represent entity, boundary and control objects is uh, with suffix. So a control object may have the suffix control appended to their name. In the same way, boundary objects may be uh, named to clearly denote an interface and uh, boundary suffix. 
so and uh, entity objects do not have usually do not have any suffix appended to their appended with their name so this is another uh, recommended way uh, to represent uh, entity boundary and control objects uh, this representation uh, you can use even and the uml stereotype is not available so this is uh, uh, the di the diagrammatic uh, way to represent uh, uh, boundary control and entity objects so this represent control so this represent control object this represents boundary object and this diagrammatic convention uh, circle uh, underlined you can say circle represents entity object so this is the control object this is the boundary object order entry entry and this underlined circle is the entity object so you can represent these objects in this way as well so one way is to use stereotype like control boundary entity another way is to represent suffix with the name of boundary and uh, control objects and the third way is to use di diagrammatic convention for object types so next is generalization and specialization <coughs> so generalization is the modeling activity that identifies abstract concepts from low level ones <clears throat> means you uh, notice common features among the related concept and then create abstract concept of from it to and that abstract concept describe the common and general features for example if there are uh, two concepts student and uh, teacher so you make a generic class uh, of uh, that that will be person so this is generalization specialization is the activity that identifies more specific concepts from high level one for example if there is another concept uh, another concept came like uh, staff so you make uh, uh, make staff generalized class uh, you make stuff uh, specialized class uh, and derive it from person fine so uh, both generalization and specialization shows inheritance relationship between concepts so modelers usually call inheritance relationship generalization specialization relationship so <clears throat> this uh, is an example of generalization hierarchy the top of the hierarchy represents the general concept whereas the bottom nodes represents the most specialized concepts so uh, in short if you are moving from bottom to top this is generalization concept and if you are moving from top to bottom this is specialization concept so like low priority emergency disaster all are types of incidents so if you are making a generalized class of it that will be incident and if another type of incident came and you want to uh, place it over here this is this will be specialization So this is end for today's lecture thank you so much